Hi, I'm Michael Kim of 120 Sports. You're watching NAB Show Live. Live from Las Vegas, this is NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. Good morning, guys. Thank you so much for coming in. I am so excited about this. I'm a gadget guy for a, the longest time. And this morning, we're talking cameras and cinematography with some of the best in the industry through the full hour. We've got a panel of three and then a panel of three in this half hour talking about cameras and cinematography. One of them you've seen here before already, and uh, that's going to be my buddy Rod Harlan. We're also going to introduce you to somebody from Westcott, Brandon Heiss, and I'm going to introduce you to David Wells, a guy that absolutely knows gear because that's his living. I mean, that's what he does. So uh, let me go ahead and get into this. I'd like to do a brief introduction of uh, Rod Harlan. Now, Rod is an ind industry veteran with 25 years of experience. He's been an author, educator, well, been. You are still an author. <laughs> You're an educator, uh, videographer, animator, multimedia artist, and Adobe addict. And in fact, that's, I think, where we met. That at, is. At one of the uh, Adobe Photoshop World conventions. And uh, it just had a, a lot of history with Rod. And every time I have uh, uh, questions in video direction, we're just like close geographically. To we it. are. So uh, I, I reach out to Rod an awful lot. Um, he's got connections with all kinds of industry organizations, Adobe, NAB, FMC. You're doing training here at the um, post-production post world. world. Mm -hmm. And uh, so a, a consummate professional. Uh, you can find out about him via Twitter, at Rod Harlan, all one word, just smush it together, at Rod Harlan, or rodharlan.com. Rod, thanks for coming on. Man, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate to be back. Again. Again. Yeah. It's my go-to guy. <laughs> um, also, another friend of mine is Brandon Heiss. I've known you for a lot of years as well, Brandon. And um, what's been interesting for me, Brandon, is, well, I, I, let me do your introduction first, and then we'll talk a little bit about Westcott. Brandon is the Director of Marketing at FJ Westcott, focusing on education uh, for photographers and filmmakers who are new to the industry or new to the world of lighting. Prior to joining Westcott, he taught university, he taught photography, sorry, taught photography for five years in higher education at Bowling Green State University. And so, um, Brandon, we have talked an awful lot over the years, and it seems like Westcott is really jumping in big time into motion image capture Absolutely. from the still. I mean, you've got such a huge reputation in the still images. Sure. And, uh, and it seems like as I've been personally going from being the still camera expert on a whole bunch of reviews for, uh, uh, for years and moving into video and, and simple video production for me, you guys have been uh, leading the way. So I, I'm like calling you guys all the time going, okay, uh, how do I do this next thing? How do I do this next thing? So that's been an awful lot of fun. Uh, I'd also like to introduce somebody that I've met recently, but uh, we, we talk about gadgets and uh, photography and uh, gear, and that is David Wells. Now, David is the president of Moving Picture Rental. Um, you're a, he's a director, cameraman, uh, lifelong technologist, and the president at the president, sorry, as the president of Moving Picture Rental, uh, you're involved with uh, an integrated production services and rental house. Wells got his start in the film industry as an on-set PA for the hit show Miami Vice. Oh, we got to talk. <laughs> <laughs> That's like part of my DNA. Uh, you couldn't go out in the 80s and the 90s. You couldn't go out in Florida unless you were dressed in all white yeah. uh, with white espadrilles uh -huh. and, a, and a colored T-shirt. I had the full suit. Yeah. I, I want to see all of you guys. <laughs> oh, I had it. <laughs> it was good okay, looking. Okay, so the weird thing was during that time, I had the whole white thing because mm -hmm. that's what you did in Florida. Yeah. I had a business meeting in Atlanta and everybody's wearing normal suits. Right. And I walked in looking like a bad Don Johnson. Uh, it was horrible. That's why, right. you know, uh, Larry, last Halloween I came as Don Johnson to a oh, Halloween perfect. party. Yeah, I had the pager. <laughs> The gold watch, the pinky ring, the espadrilles, the jacket, you know, and of course a wig, you know. So. Of course, yeah, you got it, yeah. you got it. You know, had it, go it that was fun, it was fun. So, uh, what I do want to talk to you guys about is gear and the industry and uh, where you've seen it 
Rod, we talked about this a little bit the other day, mm -hmm. where it's come and gone. And, right. and what, what I see is not just changes every year in the industry, but faster changes every year in the industry. So cameras and cinematography, let's talk about what kind of cameras were you using when you first got into this thing 25 years ago, 20 years ago. Right. Well, I mean, one of the, one of the well, you know my, my story, and we, we shared a little bit on that, that segment the other day, was uh, my, um, my broadcast professor came out in 1989 and, uh, to, to NAB and came back with video toaster number six and brought that back and exposed a 20-year-old Rod Arlen to, wow, look at all the possibilities that are out there uh, in, the, in the world. And, it was, and I, just, you know, I just kept following that wave with, with uh, you know, QuickTime when that came out in, in, at the end of 1990, and then you start getting Premiere in 91, and then COSA After Effects I got exposed to in 92. And so by 94, here I am, I've, I've got my own little, uh, you're kind of able at that time to, to start doing this this competing with these post houses and you're working out of your bedroom your garage and yeah, all, all early, that kind of stuff the early non-linear non-linear editing days yeah. right uh, my big thing was when i i still remember i i spent fifty thousand dollars on a media 100 uh system back in the mid 90s and i just thought i have arrived yeah you know, like that like that is it <laughs> and one of the big things we talk about now is that the crappiest cell phone in the market today can do more than 10 times more than my $50,000 media 100 system did yeah. back in the mid 90s you know and so uh, I was one of my sessions I was working uh, I was talking and uh, one of the guys from the, the BBC was there and they use an iPhone 6s plus for all of their wide shots and they literally integrate it with with all of their high-end camera systems they, yeah, you know, they've Ryan, got a I'm actually teaching that these days and oh, I yeah? teach simple video production so uh, a simple DSLR on a tripod for a one-up shot that's that's typically it. But then when, when my students are ready to go to that next level and add a camera, I'm like, add your cell phone. Right. Have that be your cutaway camera. Let's look at different camera angles and things like that. So it's absolutely usable. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Brandon, let's talk a little bit about Westcott. Now, my history with Westcott is I was big time, and, and still am, into still shooting and DSLR, high-end DSLR photography. Um, and Westcott has just always been uh, an industry standard, uh, an industry staple for the gear and the, and the lighting for stills and all the uh, studio setups and right. pop-ups and things like that. <clears throat> and I was doing video uh, review work for b &H Photo in New York. Sure. And I remember when you sent me one of the very first ever flex lights, LED lights. Yep. And I was like, this is going to change everything. Yeah. And uh, you guys have just gone with that like crazy in a very short period of time. So rather than steal your entire thunder, oh. Brandon, let's talk about what you guys are doing that, that uh, cinema and TV would like to know about yeah. and how you fit in the market. Sure. No, and, and that was not too long ago. That, that happened, know. what, last February roughly? Right. Uh, February 2015. And at NAB last year, we kind of premiered the 10 inch by 10 inch flexible LED mats. Um, and it was rewarding. I mean, we won a couple of awards, best lighting product of the, of the show. And, uh, but this year, this past year, we've really kind of gone full steam ahead, uh, introducing bicolor units, introducing smaller units. You know, the smallest size we have now is a 10 inch by three inch, all the way up to a two foot by two foot. LED mat. And I actually brought one uh, with yeah, me you today. You've got to show this off. People just don't, they can't get their head around how cool this is. Because when I was covering the NAB show, I guess three years ago, we had some rented panels that looked like they were that size. They were heavy. Yeah. I helped the team carry them from place to place <laughs> to place. They were heavy. You we, remember that, huh? Yeah, I remember it very well. And that's why I, when, I, when I picked up your flex light the very first time, I was like, Wow, that's light. Yeah, so it weighs, I mean, the mat itself weighs next to nothing. I mean, yeah. mere ounces. Um, and it looks like a traditional one by one that you've got right here. But what's really cool is it's all just on a scrimgem frame. We've that's literally awesome. skinned our whatever diffusion we want on the front side of it. Sure. And now I have this flexible uh, LED mat on the back side of it. And that um, can go so many places. Exactly. You guys have them in China balls, you have them. Uh, you, you can hide them in places on sets. Yeah. 
No, I mean, and actually our set here is we've actually built a house, you know. A lot of lighting companies, you'll walk by and you'll see a bunch of lights sitting up on light stands, and that's great, and you can probably get an idea of how you can use it, but what we've done is we've built a house because a lot of people are walking into a house, an office, um, and they're like, I sure. don't have space for light stands. Right. Because this is so light, a lot of people tape these to the wall. I Velcro them, them to up the wall. to the wall. Absolutely. Velcro them to the wall. Um, this actually is one of our one by one by colors, and uh, it packs a lot of punch. Whoa. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah. So, and I know the crew is back there going, What are they doing to the light? Yeah, sorry to mess with uh, <laughs> the exposure there. So. But, uh, you know, and, and it's also a perfect uh, combination with our scrim gym that's been around for, you know, 20 plus years. Um, you know, to be able to just pick any size you want, skin it to the back of the scrim gym frame, and uh, and be up and running in a mere second. So, so, so that I got to tell you a funny thing. So, the, I have an IFB, and I can kind of hear what's going on behind the scenes. And all the people behind the scenes are like, "I want one of those. I want one of those." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. what that that's it's that technology right there that is enabling everybody to kind of use these <coughs> smaller yeah. uh, cameras because. That's that's the problem with them. Whether it's the it's the GoPros or your cell phone camera, anything yeah. else, you don't have enough. It's not a big enough lens. You're not getting enough light in, into it, so you can't you you can't get the quality right. Right. But by by adding more light in places where before maybe you couldn't or it was inconvenient exactly. to do that. Now all of a sudden, these smaller format cameras are are able to capture much higher quality imagery yeah. thanks to the lighting that's in the room where before everything was just grainy and dull and noisy well, and, and you also mentioned there's a 10 by or a 10 by 3 yeah a little guy which, which is small but it's bright yeah. and i'm using it for a run and gun kit here yeah it works great it's plenty plenty bright for that david i want to talk to you about your rental business um out of florida mm -hmm. which is where you're based but that's not where you do all your business you're all over the place no. Um, I'm going to give you some time to do a shameless plug. I would love <laughs> to hear about your business, right. and I'd love to hear what's popular. What are people okay. using in what kinds of production? Sure. So Moving Picture Rental, we've been in business since 1991. We're based in South Florida and Fort Lauderdale. We do business all over North America. We use Southwest Cargo to ship to people for under a dollar a pound. So if you need an M18, we have a, a case for it, Area M18, which is a very large HMI. We can put in a rolling case and ship it for under a dollar a pound anywhere in the United States. So one of our specialties is if you're shooting in Poughkeepsie, you're shooting maybe in an in in area where you can't find gear uh, and you need large things, for example, lights like that or Joker 800s, et cetera, we can ship on Southwest Cargo or FedEx for that matter. But Southwest sure. Cargo is really convenient. Uh, moving Picture is a little different as a rental house. Um, we uh, rent digital cinema. We also rent grip and lighting. We're now the only company in South Florida that rents grip lighting and uh, digital cinema. So you can get anything from an Alexa on down to a 5D Mark II from us and a grip truck, a 3-ton, 5-ton, 10-ton Sprinter package. Come with your van, come with your Scion uh, car, and uh, <laughs> come in and get some light panels or a small HMI, whatever you need. So uh, we're doing both of that. And we also uh, provide crew services and production services. So oh, wow. that's kind of our point of difference. We try to act as a, as a production partner, particularly if you're coming into South Florida. Sure. And we've been in that market a long time. So, you know, somebody comes from New York, we're coming from South Florida. I'll give you an example. We're about to start a 20 day uh, series for uh, destination discovery on famous murders in uh, Florida. So they came in, they rented some C300 Mark IIs and a bunch of glass and a, and a grip truck and all that. And they weren't really familiar with the area, so we hooked them up with a really good production you know, uh, scout. And they said they were looking for some office space. They had said, hey, we have some across the street available for you. And uh, you know, for, you know, leveraging our relationships to help our clients beyond just taking a grip and lighting order right. and pushing it out the door. That's, we, we, that's well, kind you, of our point of difference. You know, you know the industry, you know the products, obviously, but it's not just about that. It's about the full, par, full production. That helps to know. It, it really is. You know, I, I think there's often too much emphasis put on gear uh, with young filmmakers. They need to think more about content, what's in front of the camera. Sure. You know, instead of spending $100 on this, you know, behind the camera, it should be spent getting it on, on camera, you know, whether that's wardrobe or a location or a location fee. Um, so, so yeah, so we've been in business a long time and uh, seen a lot of things uh, come and go. And uh, we've never had so many cameras, you know. Back in the day, we'd have a, a beta cam and a beta cam, you know. <laughs> right. Because uh, we weren't renting film gear, you know. Uh, and, then, and then, you know, the Vera cam came out and we had one of those. So, wow, we had a beta cam and a Vera cam, you know. And, and of course, smaller cameras like the HVX 200 and those sure. ones popped out. But now, I don't know, we have 
uh, eight different models of cameras, and it's always, uh, always, always growing. But it's, it's a really, really exciting time for for people just getting into the industry. Um, there are no barriers to entry now. No. It is the best time true. ever. That you know, is true. I, you, you can date. I was, of course, like five years old when I worked on Miami Vice, you know, because I'm 38 now. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, back then, to get in the industry is really hard. If you wanted to be a shooter, you know, 16 millimeter film or 35 or whatever, it was a big nut to do anything, to make sure. any kind of film whatsoever. There was no Vimeo. How did you get your work seen, you know? Um, so it's a really exciting time for, for people to get into, into the business. Uh, okay, uh, now the only I'd like to thing, support that. The only thing we didn't cover, because this is shameless plug time. Okay. And we're talking to I'm not a very good sales lots guy. Lots of people. No, <laughs> okay. no. I want you to tell people how they can get in touch with you. Right. So you can find us on the web at movingpicture.com. Uh, we're in South Florida. Uh, we have a big social media presence. Um, you know, if you um, uh, need gear uh, or just good or bad advice, you can uh, can give a call. <laughs> Great. And uh, we're we're constantly uh, investing. We're here at the show. We're going to have the uh, new uh, Canon. Uh, it's either 1880 or 2080 uh, zoom lens, the medium format uh, lens. Yeah. It's going to be fantastic. It's EF mount. Uh, that's going to go on the Mark II beautifully. Yeah. It has a rocker ENG style. Finally, the guys, you know, we had Fujinon lead <laughs> the way right. with coming up with a digital cinema lens that had a rocker zoom on it. That's and right. that was an epiphany. And then Canon jumped on board, and now they're on their on some of their bigger uh, lenses, like 17 to 120, which we sure. purchased a couple more of those here at NEB. It's wildly popular. And now this $5,000, that's a $38,000 lens. But so now we have this $5,000, I think it's 1880 uh, T4.4. Fantastic lens for anything EF, you know, particularly the C300 uh, Mark II. Lighting-wise, uh, we'll have the K5600 uh, para, um, Parareflector, it yeah. competes with the Breezy. Uh, that's a big soft light that you can put the K5600 uh, Joker 800 and 1600s in, as well as Tungsten. Uh, we'll be buying more Airy product this year. Uh, we'll be putting on a couple more minis in the inventory. Uh, and, um, but then, you know, we rent 5D uh, Mark IIs also. And that's what I was going to say. What yeah. do you rent when it comes to, to cameras? Uh -huh. Obviously, 5D Mark IIs, a lot of people can't afford those sure. themselves. But what do you rent the most of if, in, in the camera thing? Is there one or two models that throughout the course of the last 12 months you've seen go out the door more often? Sure. Uh, by far, the leaders are the C300 and the FS7. That's what I think. Yeah, and it's amazing. I, I didn't want to get it, you know. Look, when I got into this business, an avid media composer, we're talking about post-production media right. 100s. I, I remember that all so well. And a real, real quick story, I, I was uh, d directing off and on back in uh, 89 when that all happened. Right. And we're using, we have, I have this post house called Post Edge in, in Miami, and we're, we're editing. It was a job I shot in Hawaii on film. We shot it on 35. And we're editing on a Quadra with the very first version of, of, uh, of, uh, of Avid. Right. And it's so pixelated, as we're editing, I can't even see eye lines, you know? <laughs> so we'd have a tape deck sitting there next to the Avid, right? So we could go, okay, go to time code, tape 10, time code 28. And you go there like, oh yeah, the dude's look, looking that way, or he's looking this way, he can't even see it was so pixelated. But wow. it was revolutionary. We could edit so fast wow. back then. That's but uh, anyhow, um, so C300s and FS7s, okay. and uh, uh, obviously the Alexa has had a lot of legs. Uh, right. If you would have told me five years ago when we bought our first couple that they'd still be renting today, um, I'd say you're, you're, you're out of your mind because it just seems like cameras are changing all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Now, Brandon, one of the things that I know about, and all of us sitting on the stage, we all know this, but it might not be apparent to people watching, is you demoed a light. You just picked up a, a little flex light, very lightweight little thing. It was on a scrim. Uh, the, would you go ahead and pick that up again? Sure. Okay. Uh, you can set the frame set the frame down. Okay. And turn the light on, please. Okay. And, and what's cool about the dimmer is it it is both a brightness dimmer and since this is a bicolor, uh, you can dial in with digits on the dimmer sure. uh, to the exact color temperature that you want. But keep picking that stuff up. I'm going to give you a hard time. Keep picking that stuff up. Oh, he wants to show. Everything. He wants to show the battery. It's on a freaking battery. <laughs> That's what he wants yeah. to show. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah, so you can be in the field. That's what I'm using for my running gun. So I've got a 10 by 3 panel that's bicolor, so I can match whatever is on the show floor. And at a distance, have really bright light. And I have the thing just kind of on a, a little wire mount right, right above my camera. And it works. You know, Larry, you talk about run and gun, but uh, there are ASC member DPs now uh, ordering light, these type of lightweight panels. They're on every single 
uh, order now. So I'll get an order for you know six Ks on down, yeah. and then there'll be a half a dozen of these different sizes. And run and gun, we're talking about a genie crew of four and four, four grips, four electricians, with a with a hamper full of these things, walking onto a set and pre-lighting something in maybe a half an hour, yeah. Yeah, opposed to an hour. Wow. You know, we're spending $10,000 an hour on a TV yeah. series, you <laughs> right. know, for crew. Right. And so they're coming in there, and if they can just nail it to the wall, they nail it to the wall, That's you it. know? And yeah. then our department comes back and patches the wall, and it is quick. You can lay them on the floor, you know? Yeah, they're, they're, they're splash fantastic. Proof. They're, you know? they're, they're awesome. The heck <laughs> Man, I'm, if, I, if they can live up to what I put them through and pack them in my tight little bag and stuff, they're yeah. great. Uh, Brandon, I want people to find Westcott. Sure. So where on the web? So FJ Westcott, so W-E-S-T-C-O-T-T -T dot com. Um, obviously, we sell through all the major retailers as sure. well. And, uh, but information, fjwestcott.com is going to be your best place. Social media, um, you know. We're yeah, and if you go over. to YouTube and look on the B&H YouTube channel, yeah. the f first flex that yep. was out there, was uh, reviewed Nash by Nashville. somebody that was amazing <laughs> on camera. Mm. Uh, would, it, yeah. would his name be Larry Becker? Yeah, by any could chance? be. Could oh, okay. be. Yeah, right. yeah, that was one I did. Um, so yeah, that was a kick. That was such a that was such a blast. It was so revolutionary, yeah. and you guys are, are still breaking new ground. And those panels are not the limit. You have one by three, one by two strips, one by three strips, uh, two by two foot. In fact, something cool for the people that are out here. Uh, we built an 8x8 wall um, on a scrim system at our booth. We put 16 of our 2x2 two two, uh, panels on the back of it. I, I, I'm not. Ex I'm sorry for interrupting. I'm not What's actually paid here? by Brandon. They don't <laughs> give me gear, but last time he came to my Florida studio, he gave me this. It's just cheap. a really comfortable shirt. <laughs> <laughs> So, and I know the audio guys in back are like, what's he doing to the mic? What's yeah. he doing? Yeah, I got I to show you. I'm, I'm Westcott underneath the surface. Yeah. Yeah. We appreciate it, Larry. Love that stuff. Thank you. Rod, how can people find out about you? Honestly, for me, it's just it, go to either Twitter, Rod Harlan, or really on any social network, Rod Harlan. You'll pretty much find me and uh, rodharlan.com as well. Right, and also 813-5... Hey now, hey now, <laughs> hey now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey now. Guys, I, I can't thank you enough. We're down to about the last minute, and I want to thank you so much. This I could talk about for weeks, and as soon as we're done on the air, I'm going to keep talking to you guys because I just love all this gear stuff. It's where I come from. It's where I've been for years reviewing gear for a lot of time uh, a long time so had a had a real blast with this guys thank you so much for being with us in this first half hour of gear and gadgets and cinematography we're coming back with more and we've got some special guests in the second half too so come on back hi i'm louis aguirre co-host of the insider you're watching nab show live produced by broadcast b Las Vegas. This is NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. S -Beat. S -Beat. Welcome to the second half hour where we're talking about gadgets, gear, cameras. This is my wheelhouse. I love this stuff. And we have some amazing folks on stage. And I would like to go through and introduce you in order to the uh, folks that have joined me on stage. Now, in the first chair is Michelle Suisa. He is the managing director of the studio at B&H Photo in New York. Um, I know a little bit about B&H, been there a time or two. So for over 25 years of his career, Michelle has worked in visual effects as an artist there, uh, creative director, has been recognized for his innovative, innovative approach, an early adopter of emerging technologies. He pioneered visual styles and image treatment techniques that have been widely adopted as industry standards. Michelle has forged a very strong relationship with technology manufacturers and still acts as an R&D consultant for a number of leading companies. Michelle's creative and technological experience has matched him with top talent in the industry from the world's renowned designers to Academy Award directors. His work has been internationally acclaimed and he I is the, now. Yeah, oh, okay, I we're done. Leave. You're done with that. Yeah. I'm done. I, but I got another paragraph here. <laughs> All right. Michelle, thank you so much for joining us and uh, for representing B&H. Absolutely. Photo it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, additionally, we have Tim Smith. Now, Tim is the senior advisor for film and TV productions at Canon USA. 
Ant Cannon, man, huge booth, incredible presence, uh, great things going on here. I spent a yeah. lot of time there at the during the show um, the past couple of days. Tim serves as Cannon's senior film and technical advisor. In this role, he provides on-set support for te and technical expertise, consults on new product development for the cinema market, and he serves as Canon's industry expert, working with all levels of filmmakers. Tim's been with the company for more than 25 years, beginning his Canon career with Canon Professional Video Division, where he managed field teams, uh, supporting sales and support. Um, He's also the associate and associate, I'll start this again, new sentence. He's also an associate member of the American Society of Cinematographers, and he lives outside Los Angeles. His home number is eight, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Give him the wrong number, that'd be perfect. <laughs> Give him Michelle's number. Tim, thanks, My so, number. Much for, thanks so much for joining My us. My pleasure. Now, um, Jose Maria Noriega is with Fluotech, and you are with a lighting company that is the reason everybody in the world out there can see us right now. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, well, we you. appreciate it. it. It's brilliant. Uh, so I want to I want to thank you so much for being here as well. Now, uh, this is the thing that we all look forward to in life, and that is having your boss sit at your same desk while you're working. <laughs> Ryan Salazar, man, what an incredible thing. He didn't, he didn't put me up to this. I am having such a blast at this show. It's an amazing show. Hundreds of thousands of people are watching me on camera because he invited me to be here. Ryan, thank you thank, so you're much. You're welcome, you're welcome, and, and all the stuff, if you, if you knew half of what was going on behind the scenes, you would, you would join his fan club. I am lining up to be a lead member. So Ryan Salazar, thank you so much for putting on such an incredible presentation. Sure. He, I promise he didn't put me up to that. So we're talking just generally uh, gentlemen, about things that are going on in the industry, and Michelle, with B and H being the the largest, arguably the largest uh, provider of gear, um, I've known about you guys for a lot of years. I've done reviews for you guys, um, and so what I wanted to do was tap into what you can tell me about where the industry is right now. What is popular? What are people walking by and buying at the B and H booth and signing up for? What's popular now? Um, I'm going to talk a little uh, more specifically about uh, what really NAB is about, which is sort Please. of a, a uh, corporate business-to-business -business environment. It's a little less for uh, a consumer service than sure. what a lot of B&H does, and that's what my division is really sort of focusing on. And I think um, what we've seen is we've seen a lot of new standards or uh, new emerging technologies that are actually being adopted by a whole range of markets. And I think that's really uh, uh, sort of the new development in what I would say in, in today's show is that it's being democratized even more than it was in the past years. Um, you know, you, you can get a $400 VR rig today and you can get a $60,000 VR rig. You know, and there's an application for both. And I think it goes beyond the media and entertainment market. And I think that's really uh, what's making us so uh, successful is the fact that uh, we can adapt, you know, to any of these markets and serve them in a way uh, that is appropriate for each one of them. Um, and more than, uh, I would say, specific uh, uh, gear or technology or actually pieces of equipment that are out there, you know, and that uh, is really always sort of overwhelming, even over sure. three and a half days of, of show, I think you could see, you could see 40% of everything you want to see and still feel like you've, you've missed so much. Um, but I think, generally speaking, I think uh, I've gotten three themes out of NEB this year. Uh, one is migration from traditional uh, uh, broadband, uh, traditional baseband video output to IP. That is a, that is a tremendous uh, sort of industry uh, uh, sort of trend. Uh, HDR is definitely, and I think you know, Canon is is really certainly a, a big. Uh, a proponent and a big uh, participant into the HDR effort. That really is uh, a tremendous enhancer of viewers experience sure. in all the markets, professional, uh, uh, consumer, mobile, all across the platforms actually exist for delivery right now. I think it's really uh, one of the most exciting uh, uh, type of technologies that are uh, available uh, in diverse forms, but already available. 
um, and, and do, VR. Do you, see, do you see any one, I'm sorry for interrupting, do you yeah. see any one of the HDR formats uh, coming through as the, the clear winner yet, or is that still up in the air? Well, I don't want to pronounce myself in sort of a process that's, I think, already uh, in development stages where uh, there are at, the, at this moment two more or less dominant formats. Sure. Uh, the Dolby format with PQ, which is actually a 70 standard, 2084, right. and uh, HLG, which was accepted sort of by the ITU more or less as a, um, as a more conducive format to uh, live delivery or live broadcast. So I think these are, at this point, I think the two dominant, you can correct me if you think I'm, in, I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly uh, correct, but I think the, you know, the impression that I get is that most of the people who actually are uh, well-versed into producing uh, uh, manufacturing equipment for uh, HDR workflows are really at this point uh, sort of uh, concentrating their compatibility with PQ and HLG. And you also started to mention when I cut you off so rudely uh, about VR. And so, uh, what do you see going on there? Uh, absolute explosion about VR. It's just, it's all over the place. Uh, from a tiny little spherical mini camera for 300 bucks all the way to Nokia's Ozo at 60 grand. Um, I think it's just, it's just the most extraordinary explosion we've seen since um, the full start of stereoscopic 3D, which right. uh, I think does not have the same level of immersive engagement that, uh, that VR does. And VR has. Um, so much added development to it. You know, VR can evolve into uh, augmented reality, which then merges, you know, a different set of worlds, you know, the virtual world and the real world. I think it has tremendous potential. We're very, very excited. We have uh, forged, uh, I would say, at least half a dozen new partnerships at the show sure. uh, with new manufacturers, production companies to actually continue to educate uh, and, and be a real player in the VR space. I think this is uh, one of the most exciting uh, development we've seen at NAB this year. Thank you so much. Right. Um, Tim, and it, it seems like we're hopping topics, but we're sticking to technology. Canon, huge presence here, yep. and an, an incredible special camera here that's been somewhere. We do, we have, the, um, we have a C500 here, which yep. is not a brand new camera, but we have it here because it's been in outer space for the last 444 days, I think. Wow. Uh, we got involved in a project about three years ago with a cinematographer named James Nyhouse who shoots the IMAX projects in outer space. Um, and they went and created a film called Beautiful Planet, which premiered in New York last week, but opens nationally uh, April 29th. Um, it's gonna get a lot of attention. It's got Jennifer Lawrence narrating, so it's got all the, all, all you need to get an audience, but it's a wonderful film about global warming and the importance of this, but it's a documentary shot on the International Space Station over the course of over a year by astronauts. Um, it's something that the digital cameras, the smaller cameras, the um, efficient cameras allowed them to do. I mean, you get eight or nine minutes of film in an IMAX camera. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a very interesting documentary over a year when you only have nine minutes of film to play with. Uh, and reloading film in space is very challenging so and expensive. So it, it created something that's really pretty good. I really encourage you to go out on the 29th to your local IMAX dome and and uh, see what can happen. Now, from a technology standpoint, to take a digital image, a 4K digital image, and make it seven stories high, that challenge was, was fascinating. It really was, to, to be able to do this, do it so efficiently, and, and not hurt the experience. They were able to get shots of things they could never get before. Sure. You know? And there's an efficiency to it. Again, they're not, they're not looking at how much footage is left on the clock and, and saying we can't do that again, so. Well, and, and I don't want to uh, also shortchange Canon because you guys have some announced new products we at do. the show, oh. and, and I want to keep our show going. In, in products, yeah, you know, well, you've been to our, our booth. It's a yeah. great show all by itself. Sure. Um, and <coughs> some of the products over there, like the 1880 <coughs> Cine Servo, reasonably priced Servo, um, is going to be enormous, and the response to that has been, been overwhelmingly good. It's an 1880 uh, EF mount Servo lens, Cine Servo lens, 4K Servo, um, for $6,000, that uh, is a T4, and it's, it's gonna be huge. We're looking for something to kind of um, work with our mid-level cinematographers. And right. lots of them, and, and mid-level's probably, I'm only talking financially, some of these mid-level photographers are making huge work, so I don't of mean course. that. I just mean people that are, that are on a budget. Well, you're, a budget. You're, getting, you're getting gear in the hands of people to produce amazing finished product, 
at a much, much lower barrier to entry. Right, and the, the exciting part about that, past all the technologies, we're getting, we're putting products in the hands of people that can get their stories told. You know, entertainment stories or documentary stories, things that are important to the artist, and it, it kind of, you know, the word democratization of Hollywood is overused, but the 5D Mark II certainly did that. Sure. But we continue to expand. They get to up their game. The product looks better. More people will see it. There's so many more outlets to view between Netflix and Amazon and iPhones, everybody's content. We need to fill this 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 need for content, and it should be good content. Yeah. You know, it's not a matter of just a million people watching a cat that looks like Hitler on YouTube. They can put really good stuff there. <laughs> Thank you for the Hitler cat reference. That was hilarious. That's from the hey, only, hey, Tim, I'm just, probably the only Hitler reference all week. <laughs> hey, Tim, I'm just curious. So as far as, uh, you know, I'm more into the ENG type stuff, mm -hmm. right? So, um, you know, if you got, everybody's got, you know, you've got DSLR cameras and, and you've got a lot of cinematographers at the show. Uh, I'm curious, what's your primary business right now? Is it a lot of, it's more DSLR type stuff or is it more uh, um, run and gun ENG style type cameras or even maybe somewhere in between? It's sort of expanding in all categories. Um, if this had been a couple of years ago, the DSLR thing would have been the big thing. And that really hasn't started to shrink yet, but it's sort of established. So if you feel like we're not promoting it enough or advancing it enough, it's probably only because we're getting so big in other areas at the same time, like cinematography, television production, and, and, and film. Um, but ENG is also still plays very big. That 50 to 1,000, the sports world is, loves a 50 to 1,000 lens. And at that price point, they can afford it. It's not something you and I could ever play with. I think it's in the $70,000 range. But if it's the NFL, that's a different story. So it's, we're expanding. I mean, we're the largest booth here. And, that's, and it's not big enough to contain what we're doing. Wow. So it's, it's, we're, we're the whole thing now. Yeah. I mean, if, if I could pick yeah. up on what uh, Tim was saying, I would say that um, you know, we're very proud to distribute about, I would say at this point, about 48% mar 48 of, of all Canon equipment being sold in, in the continent of the U.S. Is act actually comes from BNH. So uh, we know a little bit about how Canon has actually sort of uh, more or less transformed a little bit the world of ENG that was uh, sort of a, a traditional shoulder mount, you know, a two-third inch type of, of camera capture. It's changed. Uh, people were really attracted by the fact that uh, C100, C300 were cameras that were really accessible with uh, EF lenses, which, mean, which meant that uh, the existing pool of EF lenses could actually now be used on uh, larger sensor cameras and give, um, and give ENG reporting that feel, that cinematic feel that they never had. Sure. And I think that really transformed the broadcast industry in a lot of ways that, um, you know, we, we still see, you know, the traditional uh, sort of live reporting uh, still goes to 230-inch cameras. And, you know, and Canon is also a big player in the optics, you know, of capturing uh, this kind of, of, uh, of, uh, of medium. But I think uh, more or less we've seen, and all the broadcasters are, you know, giant clients of ours, they all have migrated one way or the other to larger sensor cameras. And sure. uh, the C300 in particular uh, has been a, a transformer uh, of, of the landscape. You know, I think it's been tremendous. People, and I think, you know, the 18 to 80 is absolutely going to be uh, sort of a marvel for all these guys to have finally a specifically designed for Super 35 affordable uh, lens that actually has server control. I think it's, that's another game changer. Sure. The, um, uh, one of the things that's absolutely necessary for all of the cinematography and videography that we're doing to work is lights. You gotta have enough <laughs> light. And it, it just can't be done any other way. And th there are uh, new folks in lighting and there are established companies in lighting. And uh, Ryan and I were talking a little bit about Fluotech because of this brilliant set. So tell me about Fluotech, Jose. Hello, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, we are all here and, and, and everything, technology and, and shows, are actually for the human being. And uh, I think that uh, if God said in his third paragraph, there let be light, it is because <laughs> somehow it's important. And, and actually, light is actually the whole matter of everything. And uh, we are very proud to be in the lighting industry because really, without light, there is no image. True. Uh, 
our company has been doing business in the United States for 20 years, and we have been uh, prized as, as a company that has innovative products. I'm very happy that I had my friends from VNH in our booth and, and said that they like our, our products. I'm, I'm, I'm really proud to see our lights in this show. Uh, and this is our first uh, show as a, as a, as a Mexican and, and, and international brand. And I think that this is, is very cool. In the end, it, everything goes for the human being. And the show, the entertainment and everything is to relate uh, one and another, no? And uh, Ryan has made uh, an incredible show to put together people and, and, and talk about how technology goes into the lives of everyone. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to, to, to be at NAB with my company and, 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 and being able to, to help each other to make the images. So we are all luminous people and, and, and that's the whole thing. Well, Jose, thank you. We have, we have great light here. And I would like you to, to share with people what kinds of products you offer and who, who are your market? Yes, actually, the, 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 the whole point, as you have seen, uh, in the very beginning, uh, life was very important in, in cinematography and television. We actually need hundreds and hundreds of kilowatts of energy to, to make the, the, the image come in. Uh, what the advance of technology is very interesting because uh, this is related to, to what we are talking, that uh, the advantage, for example, in, in sensors, Canon, even Sony, all, all of them uh, have made the need of light less important. But now we are not going into the power. We, we need to control the light because the light, it's, it's something that makes people stand out. You have to make three-dimensional atmospheres sure in order to, to, to really stand out. Uh, until now, uh, television has been a two-dimensional uh, media, and, and you achieve the three-dimensional uh, ideas through the lighting. You, you, you light your foreground, you light your people, uh, you light the background, and, and that is the way to show a three-dimensional uh, uh, complex sensation, because uh, actually the light is, is, is a psychophysical uh, situation. It's, it's not only physical. And what is important for the, for the industry is that although the workflows of technology have made a lot of, of, of changes, uh, even in the United States, I'm not talking about Latin America, Africa, and even Asia, uh, we are going into 4K, 8K, and all, all these nice uh, acronyms we have, and we keep lighting with inefficient technology in a lot and, and hundreds of thousands of television stations using, for example, tungsten lighting. And some people told me, yeah, but it has been working for a hundred years. Yeah, I know, but technology has changed. So this whole setup now will achieve hundreds of thousands of dollars of, in, of savings just because you change the technology. Actually, the lumen is, is, is a measure of wattage, right. but, but only, only in the very small part of the visible spectrum. And we, we are trying to, to make the people aware that telling the light a 1K it's, it's not good, you see, because now you, you can have a, a, one, a 1000 K Fresnel that only draws 180 185 watts, the same as a little bulb right. in, your, in, your, in your room. So I think that's the, 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 the importance of what has been with light. You can now have an, an advancing technology that will save and make a sustainable solution right. that will help the image. Jose, thank you so much. I want, to, I want you to tell people, because we have just a little time here, yep. where can people find out more about these wonderful lights? Yeah, you, you will find it in b and <laughs> I hope Come so. To us. <laughs> Perfect. Open that, arms. That's very good. And, and, and of course, you, you can always go to our Flotec uh, websites, flotec.com in Spanish and flotec.net in English. So we will be available all over Very the world, good. and that's the whole show. Jose, thank you so much. Tim, thank you so much for Welcome. joining us and, and sharing an incredible uh, uh, backstory 
for what Canon is up to, coming back thank from you. space. And Michelle, thank you so much for coming over. Uh, I'm going to go over to, to your booth and buy a bunch of stuff right after this. <laughs> thank you guys so much. It has been an exciting half hour in a great show for me. I love the gadgets and gear. There's lots more to come. The show is exciting. We'll be right back with more NAB Show Live.